I've just wrapped up my ultimate desk build that 3D printing helped me to create. You can check that video out up here. This video is the fact that this inspired me because it's so clean and straightforward. I can actually sit down and get to work. The rest of the studio, on the other hand, it looks like a bomb went off in here. Every project I try to undertake, I end up looking and digging and searching for something, and that has to change. And the first thing I want to start with is filament. There's filament all over this studio. You might see it in the background of all my videos up on top of the shelves. It's also piled up on the workbench, around every machine in the studio, and in a leaning tower of Babel that has fallen over at least once. Ah, what was that? These poor strands of plastic murdered in cold filament just before Prime Day 2. I guess somebody couldn't get them to PLA along. So to solve the mystery of how to efficiently store a lot of filament, in comes RepRack. Now there are various ways I could put a RepRack system together. I can buy the pieces from Pooch over at RepCord. They're pretty reasonably priced and it would save me quite a bit of time, but I like to do things the hard way. So I could 3D print them. The files are open source and available, but that would take quite a while of printing on various machines just to get all the pieces I need because I want to put up quite a few racks. What I'm going to do is open up this cardboard box, which has a handful of quarter inch thick black acrylic pieces that I ordered from McMaster Car, and I'm going to cut them on the X-Tool P2 CO2 laser. This thing has a 55 watt laser unit in it and will cut through this acrylic like a hot knife through butter. Now I know, I know, not everybody has a CO2 laser on hand to do this. I didn't have this till recently when Xtool sent it over to us. But you do have the option again of 3D printing these pieces or buying the parts from RepCord or finding somebody locally maybe who has a laser could cut it for you or a big commercial service like PCBWay, SendCutSend, somebody like that. Let's get a piece of acrylic into the laser and get to it. With the acrylic loaded into the P2, I can open up Xtool's Creative Space software. By the way, sorry for the amateur lighting and sound in this space. This is our Makerspace 2.0 that we have not yet outfitted. The P2, or as the chat during my live unboxing named this one, Pepe Le Piu Piu, has a cut volume of 12 by 24 inches. And that's the size of the piece of acrylic that I have loaded in there. I can also look at the acrylic with the camera inside of there to actually lay out my parts where they're going to be on the piece. Though that's actually really difficult to do with shiny black acrylic, I can't really tell what is acrylic and what isn't in the image. Anyway, after a little bit of moving things around and playing around, I'm able to nest four rep rack brackets onto a single piece of acrylic and have a little sliver left over for other projects later. I chose the parameters for six millimeter acrylic and I dialed in settings just a little bit on my own beyond that. And now I can hit start. This is also an interior room of our house. So I'm gonna fire up the smoke eater. and duct the exhaust from that out the window. I didn't do it. Then I can press the button to arm the laser. And just over one hour later, 12 brackets are in my hand. I was able to get four out of each sheet and I had three sheets of acrylic, which cost me about $65 from McMaster Car, who doesn't necessarily have the best pricing around. They're just really easy to deal with and get materials quickly. And it took about 20 minutes per sheet to make these cuts. So you can probably see why I'm cutting them versus 3D printing. On the X1 Carbon to 3D print a single bracket with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle and the settings that I decided to use would take two hours. I am going to 3D print at least one as I only ordered exactly as much acrylic as I needed and I cracked a piece while I was pushing out the gusset window pieces here. I was a little too forceful with the acrylic rookie mistake. So I do need to 3D print one of these. 
I might end up doing extra if I feel like I need more support on my racks. We'll see when we get there. Now to have my brackets, I need the pieces that go with the rest of the system. The tubes that are gonna run between each bracket and the pieces that they will mount to, which means I need to make a run to Lowe's, specifically the electrical section because the rep rack system is built around using conduit, specifically the half inch EMT standard widely available here in the US. I wanna make five foot racks and these are available in five foot lengths for 488, but if I look over to the other side, I can get 10 foot lengths for less than $2 more, which is twice the length. So I can get a lot more for my money that way. It just means I need to transport 10 footers and cut them down to my size, which that's fine. I'll save some money, just have to spend a few minutes of my time more. I ended up grabbing eight of these, not 100% that's how many I needed, but uh, I didn't do the napkin math before I got to Lowe's and I was tired, so I just grabbed eight. Fun fact, one can fit a 10 foot piece of material into a Prius if it goes all the way from the windshield all the way back to the gate at an angle. See? With conduit acquired and my brackets laser cut out, it's time to build my rep rack. I've got this blank section of wall back here in front of my server rack. That's gonna become the new filament storage area. I do have a couple of options about how to mount these to that wall, but they both use these back angles on here in a form of French cleats. There is a 3D printable bracket that I will probably use somewhere else in the studio. I'll show you before this video is over. But for this section of wall, I'm going to use some wood and turn it into French cleats. Let's go make some sawdust. Let me just move this box of filament. I really need it. I'm pretty sure the material you're intended to use for these is one by two. That seems to measure out pretty correctly to me. I've got this bundle of lath strips left over from building the wall that my new desk setup is in front of. Lath strips are just a little thinner than one by two material, so this should work. We'll see. The most common way to make these is with a table saw. Put the angle of the blade at 45 degrees and cut. I'm gonna use a router because it's what I have here in the studio. I have a 45 degree tapered bit in it with a bearing, which will allow it to slide right along this material pretty easily and give the angle I need to create my French cleats. With my wood pieces produced and my brackets ready, I can mock this up in position. I'm gonna hold it up as high as I feel comfortable putting on and removing a spool of filament to start with. The top one's probably gonna be the most difficult to put up there and it's also gonna dictate the height at which I can reach. So I might as well put that and then work my way down. I only need to make one initial mark because I'm gonna use a laser level to get the rest of them. I'll put this onto a tripod here, shine the light across the wall, and I can go along marking along that line to give me a nice level place to put the lath strip. You might think I could go with the mortar line of the block wall here, but it is not even close to level in the studio, so I need to mark a level line. Now I can drill through the wood, into the block, and throw some Tapcons into it to get this strip mounted to the wall. With our cleats on the wall, it's time to cut down our tubing. In my case, for the size I want, I just need five foot pieces, so I'm splitting these 10 footers in half. Really straightforward. I will do some four footers yet. I'll show you those in a little bit. There are some 3D printed parts that I need here. They are the clamps that are actually gonna retain the tubing to the brackets so they don't slide around and fall apart. The way we assemble these is we actually put them to the side brackets and then screw through the bracket into the 3D printed part with some thread forming screws. These will retain the clamps to the bracket and then there's a retainer screw that then puts pressure onto the actual rod that is the support for the rep rack and assembles it. With the rack assembled, it's a straightforward one by one, put them up on the wall, put up the cleat for the next one and then repeat, making sure I have enough space between each of them. And with that, my wall of rep rack is done. Now that I actually get to see it here, I'm worried that I have more filament than is going to fit on this, but I'm gonna use it to its fullest. And if I need to put up some more somewhere else, I'll do that. I ended up with two 20 inch ones down at the bottom to work around this electrical box and also to leave me room in front of the server rack so I can maintain the servers that are in there. I also ended up with 
three five footers. I had a fourth five footer, but I took it down that top one. I replaced the five foot with a full length 10 foot one because I realized that it goes over top of the server rack at the one end and the other end, it'll go over top of what will end up there. I don't want to give it away yet. That's an upcoming project. I do have a couple more racks to put up in this video, including one that I'll actually be printing off of, directly feeding filament from the rack into printers. I'll show you that when we get to it in just a minute. For right now, I need to get these racks filled up. So I need to grab all the filament I have, organize it by type of filament. I want to separate out PLA plus from PLA and PETG and ASA, all of that, and then color organize things. So I'm definitely going to be bringing Ruby in on that because she loves that kind of stuff. I didn't really film the process of sorting the filament because it was a much bigger project than I had hoped it would be. I have more filament than I realized. Want to take a guess? More than that. A uh, little less than that. I'll just tell you. 231 spools as of yesterday, but I used up one spool yesterday, so that's something. And then um, five more showed up today. Anyway, there's a bit of a problem with this. You see my new racks here. I filled up one of them, I did some math, I did a little figuring. I should be able to fit about 122 spools up here, but that's over 110 short of how many I need. Even then, that's only exactly as much as I have now, where I know for a fact I have more filament on the way. Which then brings us to here, where I used to store filament on top of the shelves. I didn't like this system as it was just filament stacked on top of each other, so I couldn't pull out an individual spool without disrupting the whole thing. Often I would knock stuff over and end up with filament down behind the rest of it that I couldn't see or couldn't find. But I jumped into Fusion 360 and using the measurements from the RepRack system, I designed a double stack tall setup for on top of here. I could explain the idea or I could just put it together and we could see it in action. So let's do that. Those shelving units are only four foot wide, so I need to cut down these 10 foot conduits to some four foot lengths. This time I broke out the porta band to make it a little bit less of a mess and a cleaner cut. These are the double brackets would allow two rows of filament to be stacked atop of each other and set onto a shelf or in my use, the shelving unit I have here. This is version one, which actually has a fairly major flaw on it that I'll show you in a minute. They assemble much like your standard rep rack, slide my conduits through and use the original rep rack clamp pieces that I 3D printed. I actually have also created my own version of these that's a little more streamlined to match the brackets a little bit better for the release version. With everything assembled and tightened, these are now ready to get moved and installed. In this case, just set on top of the shelving unit. The updated version of the brackets do have screw holes if you want to screw them to a shelf. But in my case, I'm just using gravity of the filament holding them down and it's plenty solid and stable. However, here is the flaw, the problem in the situation. You can't just put a roll of filament in. The top row is too close to the bottom row, so you have to tilt the filament into place, meaning you can't fully fill the rack and as easily remove a spool from here. I have corrected this in the updated version. It was just a flaw in the initial design, trying to make it fit into a print bed. I did get it so it could be printed by the Bamboo X1 or a Prusa Mark III, but not an Ender 3, unfortunately. Now with my two new double racks on top of the shelving units here, I have additional space for 72 more spools of filament, 36 per double rack. That's still not 235 though. I've got one more place to put a rep rack though. That's gonna be over here above the Elegoo Neptune 3 Max and the FLSUN V400. These printers can use quite a bit of filament. I've got the blank space above them. I might as well put up a rack that I can feed the filament off of right into these machines. Let's get this rack up and I'll show you what I'm talking about. As this is a workbench, I only have two 4x4 posts to mount this rack to. I'm going to use a 3D printed bracket that is included with the RepRack STLs. It mounts to the backside of the RepRack bracket that holds the actual rack and uses the fresh cleats design to hang the bracket on. As I'm putting up more racks than I anticipated, I ran out of acrylic fairly early, so these are 3D printed brackets. Once again, I just want to pick a height that's going to work for me. The V400 is pretty tall, so I have to go a fair bit higher than I might want to go otherwise, but I can still reach up here for putting spools of filament on. And once again, I'll break out the laser level, mark the other 4x4, and then screw on my printed mounts. You probably noticed that bracket in the middle of the rack is just kind of floating in thin air. I'm just using that to tie the two bars together. This is spanning wider than RepCord recommends. 
I'm at a 48 inch span here. So if I need additional support, I'll build something to catch that bracket in the middle. Now, when it comes to actually feeding filament off of the rep rack, we have a couple of options. We have a lot of options every which way when it comes to the rep rack system. So bravo on that pooch. One of our options is these basic 3D printed rollers. I printed these in PETG in vase mode. You can slide these over the conduit and they'll slip pretty nicely around the conduit or filament spools will slip on these. That's okay. But what I'm gonna do is another option that RepCord has and then there's actual bearing rollers that will then slip over the conduits. Let's assemble one of these and I'll show you what we're talking about. Assembly of these uses the same thread cutting screws as the rest of the RepRack system, has these 3D printed components that are the side panels to our rollers and uses fairly standard 608 bearings that a lot of maker projects use. What we do is put the bearings onto the side panels and then sandwich the bearings between each side panel using the thread cutting screw to then hold the two halves together. Once our spool holder is assembled, we can put it onto the rep rack. It straddles both of the tubes and then we can put a spool of filament onto that. Now, there are spacers that space the two halves apart from each other, a set distance. I found they were too big by default for the cardboard spools I primarily use. I was able to custom size them in slicer and print them up no problem for the polymaker spools I mostly use. Now these are limiting how much filament I can put up here as they are spacing the spools apart from each other, but that's not the point of this. This is more about feeding filament to the machines. This Neptune 3 Max is getting an upgrade and it's gonna be eating through a lot more filament in the very near future. With that last rack and the rollers in place, it's time to actually organize my mess, at least a little bit. I'm sure this is gonna be a drawn out process, so I'm not gonna put you all through it. Let's just check out the finished project. I now have a vastly improved filament storage system. Way, way better than the piles I literally had before. Now I can at a glance look at what materials I have and what I might be missing or am running low on. This is going to streamline my work process so much. I can just walk over, grab a spool off of there, go back to what I'm doing and have a home for it when I'm done that it can go back to. Now I will say I really wish I would have ordered more acrylic because I had a lot of hours of printing the additional brackets I ended up needing. Should always know to order more material than I think I'm gonna need. Simply put, the Xtool P2 laser made a quick job of cutting these brackets and I just wish I had done more of it. I'm also really happy that I was able to improve the backdrop of my little setup here. The studio is still an absolute disaster and needs a lot of work, but at least I have some functional and good looking filament storage behind me now. I really want to thank Pooch over at Repcord for putting this system out there. Being able to freely download these things and cut them myself or 3D print them as I did here, remix off of them as I did with my shelf brackets behind me, that has been so useful and helpful. I didn't have to create something from scratch. I had something to work off of and work with. Also, thanks for playing along with the little French cleats gag in the video. There'll be links to these files and a rep cord in the description. Please consider supporting somebody who supports the community. We made a lot of progress, but there's more to be made. I gotta get back to work on this Voron 2.4. I need this machine back up and running. So please consider checking out some of my previous videos like this playlist of studio projects or this one that YouTube thinks is best for you. Get subscribed to ensure your 3D prints don't fail. It's not a guarantee, but it can't hurt. See you, folks. <laughs>